There have been many entrepreneurs in history, but the distinction between entrepreneur and visionary is something substantial. An entrepreneur looks at the bottom line in a short time frame. A visionary is able to look ahead, years ahead, sometimes decades ahead. In this instance, we have somebody who is a visionary in the person of Mr. Leo Chris. What was the vision of an Eiffel Tower, a Colosseum, a Western Wall, a Chrysler Building, a Sydney Opera House, a Golden Gate Bridge, Great Wall of China? This goes beyond entrepreneurial skills. This goes into vision. An Einstein, a Gandhi, a Howard Florey, a Lubavitcher Rebbe. These are the people who are able to look centuries ahead and be able to carry out the micromanagement in the present moment to create a future. But today. It's a different kind of challenge. Today's world has evolved remarkably. The pace of change, the change of landscape, the rate in which we age, the way in which we eat, the way we think—all these things have now moved into a moment of explosive dynamics. And very often, the challenge on the individual is considerable. The world is becoming more spiritual. By spiritual, with a small s, I mean a quest for meaning. We are great believers at Spirit Grow, in terms of the relationship of mind and body, our attitudinal responses, our emotional responses. We're looking for health and wellness. We're looking for allowing the creative individual to express himself or herself. On any one night. At Spirit Grow, you can find a host of activities. For example, you can find in the meditation room a course on stress management, looking for serenity, looking for inner peace. The meditation helps me by just slowing things down a little bit and understanding why I'm here. When I get to a, a peak where I just feel too, too hyper, I just calm myself down, thinking of the meditation we went through. Or you can find in our cuisine center a group looking at ways and means of organizing their kitchen into an organically based system and being able to clean off all the toxicity and feel the love of Hashem in the food that we eat. Learning,、um, a, you know, in an expanded way about、um, good health and, and、um, diet. Something healthy because. Spirit grows all like healthy.、Um, I lightened up. <laughs> I lost four kilos, which was wonderful. In another room, you might be able to find a group studying an ancient text of Kabbalah, looking at the nature of human personality from a spiritual vantage point. Our thought patterns, our emotion responses. Hearing what other people have to say. About ideas about Kabbalah. You're not tied into anything. It's completely free and open. It's, it's very en enlightening. I find it very, very interesting. Absolutely fascinating. We didn't know much about Kabbalah when we started, and we felt that we benefited from the showroom. In our center, we have the capacity for people to come and study. Menachem, the rabbi, is so nice. He's very funny and welcoming. And so is Moish. The Grow, which is the young adults division of Spirit Grow, and it involves making parties and events, open mic nights, Friday night dinners,、um, to reach out to people who are unaffiliated with other Jewish organisations and. With the hope that they'll meet other Jewish people and have some kind of connection. The results are speaking for themselves. That each week people are bringing in more people, and、uh, everyone's just having a pretty good time here.
The Friday night service at Spiritual is probably one of the most exciting and dynamic services that exist. The interposition of both meditation and Nikun chant within the context of the flow of words creates a personal soliloquy as well as a communal expression that excites the soul and is able to capture the interest of the mind and heart. The Erev Shabbos um, spiritual jam, which is about trying to connect to the energy of Shabbos through music before we actually um, begin the tefillah services. I enjoy singing here. And just, it, a Friday night helps me unwind. It just answered so many of the questions that we were looking for in a show. Twelve months ago, I was diagnosed with lymphoma. And that most probably on Yom Kippur, she was going to find out the results. And I told her, either way, it'll be good, and I want you to come to shul anyway. I want you to come be with everyone on Yom Kippur, and you'll see it's all going to be good. I came in on Neila to a very shell-shocked group of friends and Menachem getting teary in the eyes when I told him that the news was not good. And then I see her. She comes to the door and I give her a thumbs up. I'm quite sure that I'm going to hear good news and I get a thumbs down. It was one of those experiences where I felt like crawling into bed at home and not wanting to come and face the world. But I was so grateful that I had and I'd come into the shul. I had an idea. We want to finish a few minutes early and uh, before finishing Ne'ila, I had Cheryl's Hebrew name. I said to everyone that there is someone who's very dear to me who's just been diagnosed with an illness. At that moment when everybody stood up and said that prayer, I felt an incredible, incredible aura of protection coming around me. And then the final tests and results came Erev Yom Kippur this past year. It is now 12 months later and we have all come through this, the whole life cycle of events. Everything had been cleared. I got the all clear at Rosh Hashanah. The 250 people's prayer came to fruition and we were able to celebrate the anniversary with happiness and Cheryl could come to shore this year and give us a thumbs up. has become a spiritual home for the whole family. It helps me to relate more to who I am as a Jew. It's an amazing and unique uh, place where you just feel like one with the community. Because it's different and because of the community. It gives me a lot of uh, food for thought. It has broadened my life in ways. Somewhat left of centre and allow people to uh, learn and explore. Brightens up my life. The atmosphere, it's very warm. Slowly the whole family uh, started to lead more meaningful life.